Greetings Tubers and welcome to my third video delving into the minds of the uh, the idiotic and the clueless and often the downright wrong. Um, if you watched my previous two videos, only two so far, um, you probably noticed it looks a bit different. I'm not saying the production values have improved but they certainly changed because it is a steep learning curve is this, uh, this YouTube business. Um, before we get on, I would very much like to thank the 24 people who've subscribed to me uh, over the past week. Um, very much appreciated, appreciate your support. Um, I'd also mention several of the comments that I've had. Um, many, many good comments, nice comments, supportive comments, but also the usual mix of uh, globe deniers, Jesus freaks, nutcases, that sort of thing. I absolutely welcome all of their comments because they give me and my wife an enormous amount of hilarity reading through them. Um, I've no doubt if it continues at this rate that um, I will probably be producing comment videos of my own in a very short space of time. They're always a giggle. But uh, anyway, what are we up to this week? Well, we're going to move away from Flat Earth, but not specifically from Flat Earthers. Or, to be more to the point, one Flat Earther. Probably known to many of you as Jeronism, or Jism, as he is uh, popular becoming known. Um, he is one true nutcase, who is stuffed so full of God that he thinks, you know, holy smoke is something that Mother Mary does when she's talking on a fatty. Um, I've been looking through his videos. Most of them... I think have probably been commented on by other people. The video that I particularly noticed, though, is one of his older ones, but it, it, it stood out um, because it appeared to get him quite upset. Um, he doesn't like the idea of Stonehenge, or, as many of us pronounce it, Stonehenge. Some of you will get that reference, some of you won't. So, what does the jizz bomb say about Stonehenge? Well, phony henge is a fake. It's a fraud. Yeah, another joke at our expense. Ha ha ha. See, the difference is, I'm kind of starting to get pissed. Not sure why these clowns think that making stuff up is so funny. But I think it is nothing but an obvious sign that these guys are insecure. Oh, we faked Stonehenge because we're insecure, did we? Hmm. Insecure about what, I wonder? Is it that um, is it that we're insecure because we have a history that starts before 1492? And uh, that was one which the Europeans kick-started for you. Um, there was actually a vast, rich history there before the Europeans got there. But uh, what, what else have you got to say about it then, Chisholm? They're pathetic. See, when you can't beat people mano y mano, you know, face to face, you cheat. You use GoPro cameras, and you invent forces, and you make up timelines and rules as you go along. You do every little thing you can to get an edge, because you can't win fair and square. So you lie. You cheat. You steal. But I'll give you a little hint. You lose, jackasses. Invent forces. Now, this is drawing us very much back into your little flat earth world. Isn't it? What you actually mean is that we build mathematical models uh, to calculate and predict the forces that we observe. That's not the same thing as inventing forces. Now, this was never a competition. But the fact that Mr. Jism is so upset uh, suggests that we're winning whatever, comp whatever competition it is that he thinks we're having. Hmm. Let's think about this for a moment. Stonehenge is around about 5,000 years old. Not all the stones are, but the site itself. The, um, the henge is actually a, a circular ring. Um, that's been there for many years. Um, there's been all sorts of things found there, right away through from the Bronze Age, through the Roman period, um, Saxon, early, early, mid, high medieval, right away through to the modern. It's always been a place of visitation for over 5,000 years. And not just for people from Britain, 
people from all over Europe. They found bodies buried at Stonehenge that have come away, have come up from uh, as far as Eastern Europe and have been in the ground for millennia. So it was obviously a place of very high importance, of great spiritual, religious significance for the people of the ancient world. But let's give you the benefit of the doubt, Jism. How can you prove us wrong? So you get to watch this great monolith, the pride of all mankind, be built right before your eyes. Now, some of you may say or may hear that this was part of a great reconstruction in the early 1900s or mid-1900s. So as I always say, don't believe me. Please don't believe me. Open your mind, watch this video, and then you tell me. Tell me if this was a restoration. Name another structure of antiquity that we just move around with cranes and ropes and build new pieces with concrete. It was a restoration. The pics that you've been showing were taken between 1958 and 1963. Um, also, you'd asked to name another structure that we just moved around with, with cranes and ropes. Okay, I will. This is Abu Simbel, built on the banks of the River Nile in Egypt at the behest of Ramesses II between 1264 and 1244 BC, um, built as a monument to him and his wife, Nefertari. In the 1960s, the um, Egyptian government wanted to, to dam the Nile downstream from the temple complex and not wanting to lose such uh, an important ancient structure beneath the waters, the whole temple complex was moved several hundred yards um, to higher ground level. Um, in all, 22 monuments were moved uh, due to the flooding of the valley, um, and the whole project wasn't even completed until 1980. So, yes, we have moved huge ancient structures and repaired the damage bits where necessary. Uh, oh, Mr. Jism then goes on to denounce um, Neil deGrasse Tyson for a bit, um, goes on about Buzz Aldrin being a Freemason, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then there's, there's this guy. Um, not sure who it, who it is. Uh, if it's Brian Cox, it's a bad picture. Um, and he describes him as... Well, flowing locks. You know exactly how I feel about him. Another fraud. <laughs> no, mate. These are flowing locks. <laughs> now, Mr. Jisonism then uh, speculates as to how such a structure of Stonehenge could possibly be built. Um, how could anyone possibly know? And due to his uh, stratospheric IQ, comes up with this ingenious solution. Built with cranes by a bunch of nobodies. A crane! <laughs> Did they have cranes in the Bronze Age? They had the birds, the cranes, but I don't think they had heavy mechanical lifting gear like we know it. They certainly would have had lifting gear, but uh, not in the way you were thinking. So, come on, J-Boy, tell us the truth about Stonehenge. How old is it? It's been there for maybe a hundred years. A hundred years. Okay, let's go back a hundred years. Um, it should have been all new and shiny, possibly still in the shrink wrapping. Oh, look. Seems a bit neglected in that photograph, doesn't it? 1906 that was taken from a hot air balloon. Perhaps they'd only just started to build it, though. Um, still, it will be nice when it's finished. We could go back a little further, though, and see the site before construction started. Oh, dear. This is Stonehenge in 1867. Looks a lot like it did in 1906. And it's certainly over 100 years ago. Okay, let's go back a little bit further. Now, the Grand Master of Light and Landscapes, J.M. Turner. Now, probably one of the, the finest um, portrait, uh, not portrait, uh, landscape artists of all time. He, he is famous for his depictions of light on the canvas. Now, he visited Salisbury Plain in 1827. Now, 
surely if Stonehenge hadn't been built, hadn't been built then, he would have had an unobscured view of the entire plain, perfect for his particular style of landscape. Hmm. Well, that was that was painted in eighteen twenty seven. He might even have had a copy of the Stonehenge Guide that was produced in 1823. Uh, this is getting difficult. Um, how about the year that that great bastion of democracy, the USA, gained its independence from Britain and George III? Let's see the site in 1776. How about 1770? 1764? 1707? This is proven to be considerably more difficult than we first thought. Okay, let's go back to the 17th century. Now, surely it couldn't possibly have been there then. Ah, this is by the renowned engraver Jan Kip, who produced this in 1695. What about the mid-1600s, during Britain's short-lived experimentation with republicanism? No. This is a book by Inigo Jones, the great English architect, uh, who was also of Welsh ancestry, a bit like myself. Um, it was published in 1655, but it was actually written in the 1620s, um, under the orders of James I, um, who was very intrigued by Stonehenge, apparently. So it was definitely there 400 years ago. Right. I suppose then we best go back to the time of Queen Elizabeth I. Surely it couldn't possibly have been on Salisbury Plain during her reign. Whoops. This is a picture by Lucas de Heer, who lived in England from 1567 to 1576. Let's take a look at Salisbury Plain then during the medieval period. Anybody see a henge? Ah. This is the Scalamundi, um, a French book giving details all about Stonehenge and, as you see, even a small illustration. So, what about the 15th century? Anything there? Mm, no, there it is. There it is in 1440. Um, but that chap stood above the others. That's Merlin. They did think he built it back then. Um, 14th century wasn't there then, was it? Bugger. It's in a copy of the, uh, the Historia Regna Britanniae from uh, 1290. Hmm. How far back can this bloody thing go? This pile of rocks in the middle of a field. What about the Romans? We had Romans all over Britain. Uh, they must have had a, a pretty uncluttered view of Salisbury Plain. Well, I'm afraid not. An account by Quintus Tullius Cicero, um, who was a famed Roman general and also the younger brother of Marcus Tullius Cicero, um, gives this account. The temples of the Britons are raised and constructed in a circular form with obelisks of stone, over which are imposts all of huge dimensions and touched by the chisel. A peace offering to Geranius or Apollo the sun. The huge stones of which they are composed lay scattered by the hand of nature on the plain. These, with the myriads of labourers, the high priest, caused to be rolled up on the inclined plains of solid earth, which had been formed by the excavation of trenches until they had attained a height equal to their own altitude. These pits being dug, they were launched from the terrace and sunk, so as to stand perpendicular, at due and equal distances in the circle, and over these were placed others horizontally. After having completed one circle, they formed another that is concentric at some distance, and towards the extremity of the area of the inner circle they placed a huge stone for the purpose of religious rites. When the sun enters Cancer, that is, midsummer, it is the greatest festival for the god, and on all high mountains and eminences of the country they light fires at the approach of that day and make their wives, their children and their cattle to pass through the fire or to present themselves before the fire in honour of the deity Apollo. 
Deep and profound is the silence of the multitude during this ceremony, the appearance of the sun above the horizon, when, with a loud and continued exclamation, the songs of joy, they hail the utmost of that luminary as the supreme triumph of the symbol of the god of their adoration. So, it was there in 46 BC when Quintus Cicero was having a look at Britain and it was apparently ancient even then. I wonder what it could be that makes Mr. Geronism so adamant in his convictions. Jesus! 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 That Stonehenge can't possibly be as old as every scientific test, as every picture, as every documented piece of writing about the place has mentioned it over the last 2,000 years at least. And 2,000 years ago, it was ancient. I think that pretty much just about wraps it up and puts to bed Jism's ludicrous ideas. Stonehenge, it's been there for millennia. Now, once again, Geronism is denying something simply because his supernaturally tiny mind can't cope with the concept of the universe without an all-powerful, robe-clad uh, sky goblin to make everything seem lovely. Guess what? Science and documented literature wins again. <laughs> If you've enjoyed yourselves, please do consider subscribing. Please do comment. Any comments are always good comments because I know people are watching. Even if you want to take the piss off me because of this lot. Most people will. But then again, most of the globers on here, I count myself amongst them, have very little in the way of hair. So I'm already winning. See you next time, tubers. <laughs>